Let's do a quick invite. Um, Susanna. I am here. Is this intros? Yeah, this is intro. I'm glad with that existential statement, though. <laughs> Hi, I'm Susanna Davis, Racial Equity Director for the state. Ian. Hi, Ian Loris, uh, Aton's note taker, slowly drying out from being caught in the rain five minutes ago. Oh. Rain. Wow. He's in Chicago. Okay. <laughs> Karen. Karen Gannett, Crime Research Group. Evan. Evan Meenan, Vermont Department of State's Attorneys. Great. Elizabeth. Elizabeth Morris, DCF. Rebecca. Rebecca Turner, Defender General's Office. Great. And Monica. Hi, everyone. I'm Monica Weber. I'm with the Department of Corrections. Great. Good evening. Um, this is really just a check-in. Um, I wanted to make sure that we have our ducks in a row so that tomorrow night when we meet with the full panel, there it'll go as smoothly as it can go, which isn't to say I'm not expecting that something, you know, that everyone's gonna agree on everything and sing Kumbaya. I just would like this to be without any unnecessary road bumps. Um, I am taking it that everyone has looked at least at the documents that are on SharePoint. So this would be a good moment to bring up um, issues that you have yourselves. Um, there are, I mean, the first, I mean, we certainly know that point one is still an open book. That seems interestingly to have been the biggest issue we've had is location of this. Um, and that has been true since we started. I just think we should know it. Um, I, I'm sort of intrigued by that, but that has been the biggest issue we have had since the beginning of this project is where this thing should go. So that's going to be a big discussion. We have narrowed it down. Um, I mentioned that last time um, that it got, I mean, we, we were really free form at one point and we now have it down to residing within the executive branch, um, which says a lot. Cause I mean, we were, you know, there was no moment when we were, there was a moment when we weren't thinking about who requisitions computers and okays over time and stuff like that. So we've gone a great distance on that, but we still have more to go. Um, you should know that Karen, if you haven't looked, did a really sort of, and witchy, right, Karen? Yes. Okay, the, they did a real big lift on points uh, four and five. Um, and that is, that is on the SharePoint um, site as well. Um, so what I really, I just literally, I want to check in, what, where are you all? What is still missing? What do you want to remember to bring up tomorrow? And don't feel again like we're filling two hours. This is really literally, I just wanted a check in of this group. Um, well, I, I'm happy to relay something that I, I also said to uh, Rebecca during a conversation that we had towards the end of last week, which is, you know, I, I don't think that this uh, unresolved issue of where to house the entity is necessarily a bad thing. You know, I think there's going to be some considerations that the legislature is going to have to make. Um, you know, one of which I'm sure rightfully or wrongfully is is the cost of housing this in each entity. And I think it would be appropriate for us to say, you know, that we had identified some some good homes 
Um, you know, we can we could feel free to flag concerns, pros and cons for each home if we wanted to. Um, and, and, and then just suggest that the legislature talk to each of those entities, do a fiscal analysis and um, and, and make the decision they're going to make. And, and I, so I think I think we're in a fairly good spot. I do, too. I do, too. Yeah, I was looking over Act 65 today and thinking we don't have to answer all of it. I mean, we'll do the best we can. And if there are things that are still out, I mean, that part where, you know, best practices, you're asking a bunch of people who don't do data all the time to determine best practices. Can we talk to the data people about that? I mean, it, it was sort of an interesting thing to put in that uh, act, I thought. And we do have data people, obviously. We have Karen and Robin and we have Witchy, but you know, we have Monica who does it as well. Um, still, <laughs> I'm sort of still sort of feeling like the people who are gonna be on this um, need to make these decisions and it would be inappropriate to some degree for us to do that before this body exists. Um, another issue um, that I, oh God, my brain is just turning to mush. Um, had, oh, we're going to have to deal with the, the really big point, the relationship of the governing body um, with the bureau staff themselves. Um, you'll remember last time we were talking guide versus govern versus inform versus... That that's going to be, I think, a a point that's going to take some time. Um, what uh, the role of the board is it governing or advisory? The composition of the board members, all those questions um, are going to come up. Are there other powers and duties? Rebecca has um, asked at a certain moment. Um, so that's that's another one that I'm thinking of. Um, th those are the first two big ones. I'm, I like I like Evan's very quiet, calm, sort of no nonsense. Well, we could just answer this by you know <laughs> saying this. So Evan, come up with one for this because that that worked very well. You said it in a very soothing voice. <laughs> okay, never mind. I just think that that would be a good one because I think that's going to be a big question. Um, that's going to be a huge question. Uh, yeah, but yeah. I actually also think it's probably one of our last huge questions. I have, you know, I, I would, it's it, one, one thing that's hard for me to do in answering that question is that, you know, I don't have a good, I know that there's, there's, uh, there's entities um, such as this that have sort of governing or advisory bodies in other areas of state government. And I haven't been involved with a sufficient number of them to know which sort of model works better than most. And so, you know, I, I, and I don't want to kick the can always, but, you know, if, if I was a legislator voting on where to put this on a bill, I would want to know, are there any similar entities, um, you know, where there's sort of run by an executive director figure, and then there's a sort of entity that has some level of oversight. And I would want to know what model works well in order to keep those people trained, educated, and engaged. Because, you know, I don't think that that's always true, um, unfortunately. I mean, and sometimes it's just because people have a lot going on, but um, that's what I would want to take a look at and sort of maybe do an inventory of those entities Maybe that's something Ledge Council would help with. I'm not sure. And then, and then, and then talk to some of those folks. If you would like, I could put in a call to Representative Lalonde and ask that. It might be helpful. He might he might know, or he might know how to get the answer to that. Okay. Okay. Um, the Natural Resources Board is one of those entities. Um, <laughs> 
And I was, and, and, and Susanna, you might remember, I, I was the associate general counsel of that board. So I have some experience with it, but I wouldn't want I wouldn't want my experience with an entity that has a similar governing structure to to sort of be the only experience that was shared and therefore have it be inferred that that's somewhat representative, that that structure is either really good or really bad, um, because I'm sure that there are ways to make it work very effectively. Right. And right. And of course, racial equity is set up that way. Yes. Um, I think this should all come up tomorrow. I will call Representative Lalon sometime during the day tomorrow and see if I can. Um, uh, well, um, Susanna's just coming up with all sorts of them. <laughs> Monica, go ahead. Well, I was also thinking, and I don't know much about them, but you know, there's a bunch of boards and commissions that fall within the Agency of Human Services. And I just went to their web page just to, and I'll just throw them out. So there's the Developmental Disabilities Council, the Human Services Board, a citizens panel consisting of seven members created by the legislator. Its duties are to act as a fair hearing board for appeals or, you know, so obviously not the same thing, but um, then uh, serve Vermont, Vermont State's uh, service commission established by executive order. Um, then there's the parole board, which is actually um, housed within the Agency of Human Services, which is those people are appointed by the governor and they have an executive director. Um, so they're fairly independent as well. Um, they're interesting because their budget is actually in the Department of Corrections budget, but we don't actually have any oversight of them. So just throwing that out there as a couple more possibilities okay. for, and I'll, I'll just copy the uh, link to that page in the chat. Great. And Elizabeth, thank you for your contribution. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm always happy to discuss mine. Mine's a little different because they're a supervisory board for a federal formula grant. So they have almost all authority on how to spend those federal dollars. Um, and then mm -hmm. they advise DCF. Um, so they don't have any, you know, governing authority over DCF's decisions, but. I think all of this ought to come up tomorrow. I mean, I'm, you know, I, I, we could certainly all sit here and go shoulda, woulda, coulda, you know, done a research thing on this from the beginning, but whatever. Um, I'm, I just, I refuse to feel badly. Um, well, and the heart, the heart of it is really the relationship, isn't it? Well, I yeah. mean, the, and and I think that, and I'm not familiar with all of these. Some of these I am. Um, certainly, sentencing commission doesn't govern any, <laughs> can barely govern itself. Let alone <laughs> <anyone> <laughs> Uh, I hate to agree with you, but that's been my experience on that commission. <laughs> um, and I'm not on it anymore. Yeah. Uh, as vice, vice chair on that commission. No, um, but I do think that's really, uh, it, it, instead of getting it lost as to, you know, this or that, it, it's, it's, the, it's the, the overarching characteristics of these various boards you guys are, are throwing out there in the chat, which is useful that we should make sure is highlighted so that we can see what the panoply of, of options there have been, but ultimately, my understanding of how we're conceiving this relationship between what I've just been calling the executive director and staff, right, versus this board, I think it, it has to fundamentally be consistent with the key principles that's been driving us all along, right, to ensure that there is integrity to the actual final project, but also the work done until you get the final project. So how do you ensure the integrity, right? Best practices, sure, method, sure, transparency, accountability, accuracy, appropriate and sufficient opportunity to get the perspectives in. What we haven't talked about explicitly is, but that AISP toolkit goes through it fundamentally and, th and throughout, just checking, checking, inheriting, continuing, exacerbating 
racism biases and data collection itself, right? Um, that we, we have to somehow build in those checks and balances. Yes. You know, how many people have... sit on the board? What's the relationship? I mean, all of that is like fundamentally, I'm not going to vote no on this panel over numbers, but what I what I do feel strongly about and what we should present to the legislature are these sort of key principles. Because um, we can say independent, transparent, however we want to say it, you know, standalone within a certain branch of government, on and on and on, but we can build it in in multiple ways. Right. Right. Okay. Anyone else got something big that we're going to bring up tomorrow? About the section or like Karen? No, whole thing. She's well, you know, <laughs> I was hoping, is Witchy here? No, but Karen, I don't know if Robin's here. I can't tell if she's on the call. I was just no, looking because I wasn't able to go read this closely, your, your section. Um, I had to drop out at two today, um, but I'm just, could you, could you just, do you mind doing like a, a walkthrough just to familiarize? And I won't ask if everyone else is all set to go, um, but I thought sort of the key points to this. Karen? Sure, yep, I'm just pulling it up right now. Um, so Witchy and I went through this together, well, not together, we actually, um, oh, and it looks like Julio made some changes as well. Um, so I haven't reviewed it since Julio made changes. So Julio, you may want to chime in as I'm going through this. Um, let me just look through this. Okay, so um, the first thing I did was I took Robin's write up under data. Um, I forget what she called it. Hold on, let me look. Data part one. So I took data part one and I just put it at the top. So it was, um, I left the original document, the draft plan, the way it was with Monica's points. I think there's seven points in there and then the, um, the figure. And then I just said, number five continued, how the office should conduct data collection, that should say, collection and analysis. Um, and then I put in Robin's data part one, um, which had to do with um, the office working with the Agency of Digital Services Enterprise Unit Liaison to the National Criminal Justice Reform Project, which we've all talked about, um, using the data integration plan. And she put attached as Appendix X and Eitan and I had talked about just putting it in the body of the document. So I left that in there, but I also added it to the body of the document. We can decide if it goes in or as an attachment. The NCGRP should work to expand their governance structure to include more community members and people represented in the data. This was added by Witchy, I think. Um, yeah, Witchy, as guided by section four in this report. So as guided by the stakeholder section. Um, the office should identify data, data extracts that are already available, and she put in um, suggestions, judiciary, DOC, public use file, national incident-based reporting system, and criminal histories, Cre create code books for the public and work on merging and de-identifying data to create a public data set for analysis, and which he added, create code books. He thought that was a brilliant idea, um, so people know what they're looking at. Um, the office should work with the governing body in the community to identify research questions to be answered and identify data needed to answer those questions in accordance with literature and best practices. So that goes to the best practice piece. It really should be the data analysts and researchers in the in the office that um, use the most current literature and the best practices and the methodologies for the question they're trying to answer. Um, the office shall post dashboards of metrics relating to racism in the criminal justice system, which is something that 
folks have been wanting. Dashboards, metrics, etc., shall be created with the income metrics delivered by similar reporting tools must be available to the public. However, before public publication of these dashboards, Karen, must you're be trying to help so now. that. Um, oh, sorry. I'll try and get closer here. Um, I think that had to do with um, people's concern that, about the use of the data and how it was going to impact um, the community it represents to make sure that there's an assessment of that. Um, and then we talked about the office awarding research grants to qualified outside researchers, not just CRG and UVM, but other researchers to answer questions by the government. best methodology for answering a particular question, um, including support for qualitative and uh, I do have a uh, so um, I will I will add that to the list or send it to Ann to add that, that to the list after I review it. So qualitative okay. analysis and quantitative analysis. Um, all quantitative and data oh. analysis. Uh, I think your internet's bad, Karen. Let me see this one. Um, you're yeah. Oh, it could be. I maybe should I shut down my um? I'll shut. There we go. I'll do this and see. It. Does yeah, that shut the right. Can you hear me? Sure. I think so. So um. Okay. So I'll. Quantitative data analysis, analysis must include an impact of context and its interpretation, such as the effects of historical policies. Um, benchmark, benchmark metric, white, not non-Hispanic outcomes, but by general population goals. And that was um, a question about not, but the but side of this sentence. And then Rebecca just wrote, yes, I don't understand what this means. We'll have to ask Robin about that tomorrow night. I'm not sure what that, or I can ask her and send a message out to you all. Okay. And then the risks that we may still need to address are avoiding surveillance, using the data for surveillance, um, addressing confidentiality and transparency. And then, um, and then this is, below this is the plan that we've gone over a couple times. Um, and this is the National Criminal Justice Reform Project Information Sharing Plan. So this has to do with the governance, the governance um, body, the in, I think we're calling it the infrastructure governance body, the nuts and bolts plan, right. um, the identifi identification of the data, the requirements committee that identifies the data, and then the architecture committee um, that determines what's needed for architecture and then staff support um, from, and the staff support is the person at ADS. And Wichi added his comments in here and um, Julio added his comments in here. And I haven't, I've, I've answered Wichi's comments in the, um, under his comments, and I have not addressed anything by Julio at this point in time. So I haven't, I haven't looked at Julio's comments yet. Julio, do okay. you want to add something to that? Is Julio still on? No, Julio said something about needing to um, oh. okay. sign off and sign on again because I think he he he's not at home and okay. um, he was having trouble. Okay. So, so the plan, the the plan at the bottom part is is what we've gone over, and which he has added his comments in there. And one of the questions we both had is, um, because this was written for NCJRP, and Monica, maybe you have a thought about this. Because it was written for NCJRP, is it okay to add in our comments to this plan? Um, in addressing racial equities, or do we need to leave the plan as it is and just make our comments within the body of the report? I, I didn't have an answer for that. 
I I thought it was well, okay. It, I thought yeah, it was no. okay to add in the comments myself. I I would imagine that it would be. I mean, the NCJRP knows about the crossover here, so Absolutely. I think that, yeah. I think that that would be. And a lot of us are we we. It's like we are them. I don't know. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are them. <laughs> we, we are. It's bad grammar, but yeah. <laughs> so, so we, we, Richie and I can incorporate his comments. And if he's on here, I don't know if he is or not, but I owe him a huge yeah. apology because somehow I totally missed our meeting this morning at 8 a.m. and that's we were going to go over this together and kind of tidy it up so we'll still do that okay thank you monica is your hand up again go for it it's up, it is it's up again so uh, <laughs> oh, i'm sorry <laughs> no i was fine no i had taken it down and put it back up but i wanted to i i have i do have two questions and um one is related to that bullet point about research grants i found that kind of interesting that the office shall award research grants to um qualified outside researchers and i didn't know it just makes me wonder where's the money coming from for those grants and if we want to actually get into that kind of a conversation here um, or in this report. So, and then two, I'm still, I don't think it's a, a, a major concern, but I am still sort of stuck on this point around um, the report where it talks about the staff that's needed um, for the Bureau, and then whether or not it really lines up with the data integration plan. I feel like we're being a little too prescriptive. Um, and I know we've had conversations about that many times, and I'm just still not quite there. Maybe everybody else is, but. Um. No, you know, uh, Monica, I, I, my, that was my reaction reading this, this detailed section right now. Is that it? Is a. It's. Uh, I don't. I'm. I'm trying to. I'm trying to understand. Like this whole. I. I was also like struck by the grant language, for instance, the language of making it mandatory, right? And um, and and then who's deciding what, and what's the relationships? And and albeit, you know, I know you guys are writing it with similar uh, challenges that I was faced with, and I tried to write the section one, which was quickly realized we hadn't yet landed as a panel on what is the relationship, right? Is it a guide? Is it is it mm -hmm. input? Is it advisory? Is it direct, right? Um, mm -hmm. How much are we insulating or this executive direct, you know, even the language we're using isn't, I, I you know, I'm, are you saying the policy side of this is equivalent to the board? The policy committee on page, um, bottom of page two, top of page three, it's called the policy committee. Is that the board? Or something else? I think this is where the overlap between the NCJRP project and our, the our, the RDAP report for the Bureau is, isn't as clear because I think what Karen mentioned is this section that starts sort of with nuts and bolts is really what the NCJRP had in mind as the way it was going to structure the work. Isn't that right, Karen? So, yes. So yeah. it's a it's that that's when you're reading all of that is really the NCJRP project in more descriptive detail. Is that I, saw you I would say around. yes. I would say yes, but the and I think the policy committee though isn't in in the way I look at this has nothing to do. Whoops! I should shut off my video again. Um, has nothing to do 
with the governance structure of the office. It really has to do with the policies of the data sharing. So when, when we look at the policy committee and the requirements committee, it's really those people that have to get together to decide what their policies say and what they can do around data sharing. So this is all about the data itself and how we share data between and among um, the departments, ADS and the office and whoever else, and, and for public transparency, whoever else is to use the data to do um, analysis. So the policy committee is really about um, the policy execs and the tech people getting together to say, we're going to put together a charter around data sharing. We're going to have interagency agreements and an MOU that speaks to our data sharing with with whomever, whoever it's going to be. And I'm not sure a strategic plan needs to be laid out here, but it, it, it may need to be laid out because what we may find out is that departments can't share certain data. You know, we've talked about this. If they're not collecting it, if it's not easily extractable, they may need, so you look at requirements, the requirements committee, and they talk about data needs and data gaps and opportunities for technological improvements. So in my in my mind, the strategic plan has to do with those things. What more do we need? What data do we need? How do we get it? Is it just that it has to be entered into the system or is it that we need to make technological improvements in the systems to be able to collect that data? So in my world, the requirements committee is part of that strategic planning process and what we need. And then the architecture is what do we need system-wise and technology-wise, um, which he called it, a, um, I think he called it, um, uh, let me see if I can find his language. It was kind of um, uh, the build, you know, is this something that you see as the, um, how we build it? Um, uh, where did he put it? And I said to him, I'm not sure what that means, but I I think that's I think that's what we're talking about. Is building the system. If there's something that needs to be done. Are there is there another sheet where you spell out all the various members of these committees? Like it doesn't really mean much to me. And I'm in government who you consider stakeholders and executives and managements. Like in the context of what the system we're trying to collect the criminal juvenile justice system and the architects like are there are there the same people um not necessarily so um when we first started putting this together oh and you're talking to someone that is um really um an amateur when it comes to describing all this and monica i'm going to ask for your help um is we really need, so when we're talking about data sharing agreements and creating a charter, we really need to have like the policy execs in the departments to say, yes, we need someone with authority to say, yes, you're going to be sharing this data and here's the data you're going to be sharing. So whether it's a commissioner or a commissioner's designee, Mana, I'm, I'm looking at you, Monica, to either nod your head if that's what we were talking, or the business person in the right. department. Right. Um, and then we need the tech person. So each department in AHS has an ADS person attached to it who does the tech side of it. So they're the liaisons between the department, their data, and ADS. And that person has to be involved because they know the, techno they know the technology side of it. Um, so we need someone that knows how to, um, we need someone with authority that can, that can, authorize the sharing of the data. So we need that whole governance piece, the nuts and bolts governance piece to authorize the sharing of the data. Then we need a requirements committee and the requirements committee are those people that know how the data are coded because they're coded differently in everyone's different system. Um, because when you ask for a piece of data, so when I ask for data from Monica, I might say, hey, I want the person's name and address, um, gender, date of birth. 
And it might, the the words they use to code that data might say something like N-A-M-F-T, first name. So someone has to tell me what that's what that is for them to be able to translate what I need into their language for coding of the data. And there's some that are really, like when we look at law enforcement data, sometimes it's really hard to tell what those codes mean. I'm going to let Monica speak here. Yeah. Monica. Thanks. I'm I'm going to I'm trying to help but Karen if I'm if I'm really not saying something that's accurate then please just stop me. You're but the saying. way the way I'm looking at this because I think we're really we we're trying to integrate two different um, projects because ultimately these projects have the same goal. And yes. I see in number one, right, if we're in the Act 65 report and we look at num number one, the office should work with the Agency of Digital Services Enterprise Unit to the National Criminal Justice Reform Project. The National Criminal Justice Reform Project is doing all the things that Karen is talking about. Right? Right. It's part of that project. And what we're saying is, hey, don't forget to go work with that project over there because it's going to help further all of the goals that the Bureau has and help support the Bureau's work. So that's you know, saying the Bureau just, is going to do it. Can I ask a clarifying question? Because I haven't heard this say, I, I think there's a presumption of familiarity with the NCJRP's work. Is it as expansive in terms of what is trying to integrate as far as the types of data? points that we've previously identified in the reports, or is it specifically focused on one section of that system involvement in the court systems? I think what it's doing is is creating the, um, one, I'm not sure the answer to that question, I think, I, but I also, I think it's creating the actual architecture and the system that could help do what we need to do for RDAP. Okay, but um, but that is an important like I, a clarification. Yeah. Like how like if we're basing our design on what they've designed, but if they've designed only a DOC sort of look or a law enforcement look or some other way to just piece it, we need to know what hasn't been considered. Um, this is I know RDAP has presented. A very, I mean, we were asked, right, to identify all discretionary, or we did <laughs> identify all the discretionary decision-making points. Uh, we've prioritized the data collection points within. I know we'll, they'll have to start off with an even smaller data set, right? But I don't know the answer. I understand, though, that it is not as comprehensive as what we have pitched. Um, Karen, do you know the answer? Well, I think I think if we're starting small, the way the AISP has suggested we smart start and look at the data sets that are available for use. I think Robin in in reading those first one of those first points Robin went through, you know, we can get the judiciary data, we can get the DOC public data set. Um, we can get um, NIBRS data. So we're talking about all those data sets. So I would say primarily we would be starting in the criminal justice system and with um, AHS type data simply because that's what we can get our hands on at this point. And I'm, and, and I'm not sure, and I think some of it will be determined when we get that governance and tech group together to talk about well what is available and find out what is available for sharing but it really lays the foundation for any kind of data sharing whether it's ncjrp or whether it's rdap it lays the foundation for that to be able to happen so whether if, if, we, if, if, if we if you said if you said to us we don't want to work with ncjrp at all we you know get it out of here we don't want to have anything to do with them you'd still have to do this process yeah i agree with that so am i understanding it correctly that bas basically the ncjrp project which which i haven't looked at at the materials i have relevant to that in a while but 
it sounds to me like that data integration project is is a, 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 at, a, at a minimum initially going to be dealing with currently existing data. Um, and so the idea is coordinate with the NCJRP project because RDAP should have the ability to integrate that same data and then build off of it afterwards if necessary or desirable. I mean, is that, am I sort of understanding that at least on a very superficial level correctly? I would say yes. I okay. would say yes. So, so the other data, you know, so if we're talking about scalability or increasing access to other data sets, the foundation will be built with a certain data set or certain several data sets, criminal justice data, that can then be expanded to other data sets that Rebecca, to your point, would hopefully include the other um, departments and agencies that RDAP would want to get data from. But we have, to build the found, we have to build the foundation to be able to do that, whether it's NCJRP or RDAP, there has to be a foundation built. No, I understand. I just, I just am trying to understand what this, this word where this plan is coming from, from what context or perspective. And I heard you say AHS data, and you said NIBRS, but can you just remind me what NIBRS is? What kind of sure. data? Yep, it's the National Incident-Based Reporting System data that our law enforcement um, agencies report to the FBI. Which would include, you don't have to give me a comprehensive. Just, it's, um, it's, it is, it's um, pre pre conviction and post conviction sentencing and custody. No, 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 no. It's 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 Strip um, it's arrests for a certain data set for arrests. Um, they call them part A crimes and part B crimes. Um, it's a limited data set for law enforcement. We would hope eventually, when Valcor is set up, if it ever it is, that we'd have access to that data as well. Um, but right now, this is what we can get our hands on. Are they using a model which is sensitive to addressing racial equities and data collection and aggregation? Well, it's useful when you're looking at arrests for certain crimes. Yes, absolutely. No, I mean, um, not what the data is useful towards the question of racial inequities. I mean that the actual build, the way that they've designed this, conceptualize the organization of whatever it is approaching the actual project. Have they approached it with a racial equities consciousness? And it, you know, has has the has the NCRJP's work in this regard in Vermont, the parallel project? Same question. No, no. And have you integrated sort of that piece of it, how to address the racial equities piece that AISP addressed into this? Well, that's what Witchy and I have been trying to do. And as now we lay this out, as we've laid this out, he is he's reviewed it and and I'm not sure. And Julio, I had asked before if you wanted to say a few words about the comments you made, because I have not looked at what you wrote into the um, data integration plan. But that's what Witchy and I were talking about is what more needs to be added here for the RDAP piece. And Julio's not here at the moment. Oh, um, so I, I the oh he is here. Julio. Julio's on I the phone. He's on the phone. Yeah, I, Rebecca, you ask a great question. I think that um, that the, what what's on the page is kind of a necessary uh, first step or series of steps to be able to identify what sorts of data are available and whether they're in use usable formats for the bureau. And part of that exercise also feeds into what the text calls a gap analysis, which is a description of the difference between what is in the existing data sets and what the Bureau wants. Um, it, is, it is true that 
she's given an example of different examples of a pre-existing law enforcement databases because that's really kind of the state of the data out there. Uh, and the approach to that's outlined about how you go about seeing what's there and whether or to what extent any of it is useful. I, I can say from my experience in dealing with a similar projects in other jurisdictions is a pretty standard way of doing it. Um, in, in, a, in a similar way, if we were as part of a, a public health committee and we were talking about how to access different health databases about different parts of Vermont, the, the process that's outlined here that I took a look at uh, is very similar. There, there would just be different databases that were offered as examples, but identifying the inventory of data and then also what sometimes is called the data dictionary, which is a description of not just what elements are in the database, but how the databases are structured and how they relate, if at all, to each other so that you can have a better picture of like, is there anything in here that already exists from a historical basis or an ongoing basis, well, that's useful to us. And then that gap analysis says, well, we know we want this stuff, and here's where it falls short, um, and here's where it appears that maybe in the short run we can still use some of this data, but maybe for our purposes it might be better to collect that data in a different way. So you can kind of have different phases where you operate initially on the imperfect data that you have, and it helps you, um, and then you see how well that works for you, and then you can kind of scope out where you want to go and how practicable it is to collect the data in different, more usable ways. Because those databases, you are absolutely right, were not designed for our purposes, but they meant, uh, they were entirely uh, you know, uh, designed to collect certain types of information about arrests, principally for NIBRs, uh, which is very useful for them, but that doesn't mean that there isn't a portion of that that might not be useful for the committee. I, it's highly doubtful uh, and, and after the analysis that we would say, wow, this feeds everything we need to know. But it might have something where you can use that information and then later, if you collect it on your own, it might be a way of comparing the information to see if there's a gap between how the information uh, law enforcement enters into the system differs from the data that someone else is collecting. So it's, it didn't strike me as very, uh, it, it struck me as like very, uh, and, and I mean this in the best sense, you know, very standard way of, of tackling a data project, which I see very mainstream uh, way of doing it. So. I appreciate that and uh, dive into um, the, del and I see that the deliverables in this requirements committee. <laughs> um, you know, I think my, my comment to that then is it's key that the makeup of that, of the committees and maybe more than one committee, maybe it's the requirements committee, I have to look at this closer, but it should not be just limited to the executive management decision makers who are you know, leading these organizations that have the data that we need to have extracted um, and share, but to actually include, that, and, and include others who can provide some again specifically with the perspectives of racial inequities with that data dictionary and gap analysis perspective right because if we just have government people talking about it and identifying the gaps or this julio do you know if that in terms of how that's been done in terms of integrating committee membership to make sure those perspectives are captured it's sort of to me it's sort of you have suppliers and consumers of data and they all have to be working together so that the suppliers know what is being sought and then can offer their own views about whether they can supply it 
uh, in government, either legally, like you might say, well, we can't, the Federal Privacy Act or whatever prohibits us from getting that information to you, at least maybe in the form that you want. Um, but, you, yeah, in terms of the consumers, that's going to be the folks in the Bureau um, who are the ones chargeable with asking the right questions. Uh, and so for the Bureau to, you know, outline at the beginning kind of at least to the extent it can, you know, what is it that it wants, at least that it knows as of today that it wants, what expandability do they want, what kind of ability, you can't know everything that you want to look for until you know what the possibilities are, but to be able to identify some fundamental things you want to be able to do. For me, the one of the most, there's really two critical, well, three, I guess, and that's like the asset inventory, what the data is, to the data dictionary, like how is it actually in there? And then three is that a gap analysis, which is which should cover not only like what data is not available, but might even identify limitations for the exist for the existing suppliers of data like maybe they are not doing things in a timely way uh, so it might not just be an analysis of data on on a screen but also an analysis of how the business rules in those different agencies operate because they might not enter the data they may not enter the data on a daily basis for example might be done weekly or quarterly, and that could create problems uh, and, you know, kind of misleading snapshots of what's actually happening. But uh, when you're talking about kind of what data we need, principally that's going to, you need to have people who would be the people who are savvy to or attuned to the, you know, the aims of the Bureau, but also who are, have the benefit of technical assistance so they can understand the data people and understand what's really a limitation and what's just kind of limited thinking, as, as, so to speak. Rebecca, can I bring Monica in? She's got her hand up. Okay, Monica. Monica's changed her comments like three or four times since she raised her hand. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Well, just, you know, because the conversation has been going on, so I'm just, you know, trying to, in a good, you know, which is fine. I'm just trying to, you know, react or add value if, if I can. Um, but the, the, the reason I raised my hand actually goes back to a question you um, raised, Rebecca, around NCJRP and really having um, that equity-centered conversation. And you know, Karen answered that that it didn't. It didn't at the time. I don't think that that doesn't mean there's still not a possibility in, for it to bring that in. Um, you know, it's just it was it. This project was that project was started four years ago, something along those lines, right? So, mm -hmm. and it's yeah. still, you know, kind of getting itself off the ground in some ways, um, even after four years. Um, so I think there's an, a really good opportunity um, for that conversation to take place. My other sense here is that um, we have two distinct projects that have similar goals, but not the same goal. And NCGRP is going to need all of the structure that's written in this document that RDAP may or may not need, right? There's definitely going to be some crossover. And I would say NCGRP's work, because it's probably going to um, continue and move a little faster than the RDAP work um, and the creation of this bureau can really provide a lot of support and guidance and um, resource to the office once it is established. I think what I'm noticing is we haven't really showed what the integration is and what's what's supposed to be separate. But 
I say that and then I really want Karen to <laughs> respond to what I <laughs> just put out there. <laughs> about the part that's integrated and the part that's separate. Yeah, and whether and just like the ability I think for the project to you know have these conversations about racial equity in addition um moving forward. Oh, I I think it's entirely possible. In fact, if if we went back to the um NCJRP team that's been meeting, a lot of them are on RDAP. I think it would be a, a big absolutely. I don't think that would be, um, it'd be an easy conversation, I think, to, to move in that direction or to incorporate that into the thought process around the data sharing piece and the data integration piece. Um, I certainly haven't looked at the data, uh, what 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 um, kind of what the integration between the two projects are. I I just I truly see what NCJRP is thinking through around data integration. This has been a a cry from so many people for so long to have data integrated and. And my joke has been for years, I've been with CRG for, oh my gosh, I think it's it's it was seven years last week. Um, I, you know, my joke has been that data integration's name is Robin because Robin is the only one that gets all these data sets and has found ways to, she understands what the coding, the codes are, and she understands how to integrate different data sets so she can actually do analysis on, on, um, and come up with more complex ways to analyze the data. And that's not okay. It's not okay that our data integration is done by an individual person. Um, we need to have a system in place um, where all the players that need to play and need to agree to do this are at the table together. So I, I don't think that having a racial equity lens um, incorporated into this work is is far-fetched at all. I think it's something that everyone on the NCGRP team team would agree to and in fact has agreed to it because our TA our um, TA provider who's with the National Criminal Justice Association and National Governors Association advocated for the Arnold Ventures to f continue to fund the TA from Mo for RDAP specifically. And a and Arnold Ventures agreed to that. So they were gonna shorten their contract and said, no, no, we don't want to stop this. We want to be able to provide Mo um to consult with this team if they need it. So they've extended their contract through June of next year for that, for that specific person purpose. So Mo can talk to this team as needed. Um as and I've always seen this is regardless of who's doing data integration, how we're doing data integration, what data you want, what data you don't want. To me, this is this is what needs to be done so that data integration can actually happen, so that data sharing and data integration can actually happen. It's been a really important piece of the work of the NCJRP Vermont team, the Vermont team that came together. And um, regardless of what studies we did from the data, the fact that we needed people to share data and make make as much of it transparent as possible has been the underlying drive, really, for this project. Um, Arnold Ventures wanted us to come up with a policy or practice change, and so we did. But the primary goal of this group has been to get data useful to a larger group of people and transparent as much as possible and to figure out what data are still needed from what agencies and offices and departments. Um, so I just think it's, you know, whether it's, and, and Witchy and I, when we, you know, were making comments back and forth, put in there that, you know, there needs to be more community engagement. You'll see some of our notes on the side saying, you know, do we incorporate community here? Is this the place we do it? You know, we need stakeholders and community here. 
Um, so we're trying to figure out how and where that gets incorporated. Um, and so it's an ongoing, it, for me, it's an ongoing thought process around what, what more needs to be said. So I would encourage you to go through it and add, you know, whether it's the governing body of the office or whether it's the office staff themselves or the executive director of the office or community stakeholders, I'd encourage you to add the, that language in there because I think that's really important. I feel like this is the place where it's another one of those statements of principle that you've been talking about, Rebecca, that somewhere in this body, in the body of this particular document, fairly fairly early on needs to be a statement about, um, oh, I don't know, balancing. No, I don't even want to go there. Um, that community members and their concerns around various matters need to be built into this at every possible step. And that something like that as a principle needs to be stated early on. I think it's going to be very difficult for us to necessarily know which, which each, what each step of that will be. Just a thought. Well, and I, I hate to be um, a wet blanket or a, but I, I feel the need here to play devil's advocate just a little bit. And maybe it's around, you know, do we need to define community member? Because I just have this thought in my head that somewhere along the line, whether either this is presented to the legislature or, um, someone reads it, they're going to say, well, what do you mean by community member? And I just think that's okay. a really important piece to, to figure out um, because sure. community is a really broad term. Well, we've already talked about it earlier in the document that different places as being people with lived experience okay. um, among other things uh, in various realms. But yeah, Evan? Yeah, I, 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 you know, I agree with I agree with what you're saying, Aton. That I think it's really important for the, the community members who, you know, for community members to be heard in the issues that this group is going to ad address. But I also think that it might be helpful to identify someplace that, you know, this entity also needs to, um, to in addition to being independent, I think it needs to be perceived as being impartial. And so I think that however this data entity is structured, it has to be done in a way where no one could perceive or we could minimize the chance that someone could accuse any individual, whether it's community member or state entity, of sort of having a disproportionate representation or disproportionate voice, that, and then that they're therefore using this group for agenda setting purposes. Because I think that that could also lead the people who should really be listening to what the data this entity reports out saying, you know, being unnecessarily skeptical. Um, and I just want to make sure we do this in a way where skepticism is at a minimum so that it can build trust that what it's saying is, is you know, is, is heard. Yep. In any event, this is all got to, I'd like this all to come up tomorrow in some very <laughs> coherent fashion. Um, I think this needs to come up to the full body. This is the other big part. This is the other big part. And tonight, that's all I really want to do is address those. Um, I don't, I personally, as chair, don't want to really go that much further without hearing from our compatriots. Mm -hmm. 
I think we've gone very far. And I have to admit to a certain level of discomfort with going much further without hearing from them. I definitely agree with that, that other folks, um, it, it would be an appropriate time for other folks to chime in and hear what we've been up to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is, yeah. this is a huge body of work so far, frankly. <laughs> Karen, thanks for putting all that stuff together that we had talked about. Thank you and Robin and Witchy. Thank you very much for getting that together. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I would not have been able to do anything about that. I would have liked drawn pictures. <laughs> well, it's a work in progress. So. You know, I, I, before we leave this subject, and I know um, Eitan, maybe you want to shift broader, but before we leave the subject in terms of what I see also missing um, from this, or from pulling in the perspective from NC, um, or NC or JP, thank you. Um, you know, again, we've already talked about the racial equities piece. I uh, appreciate you talking about the criminal justice side of it, but just to make it explicit of also the gap is the juvenile system perspective, right? Mm -hmm. And how, to what extent, if any, considerations for data collection analysis of that system changes what's presented here as well. Um, but yes, I, I, I agree with that, what everyone is saying here in terms of of, of stressing the point of, of independence and impartiality, how those are two critically different um, pieces that we need to stress. And I also like, you know, it's on your point, which is referencing community members and what we mean. I think someone else asked what we mean by that. Um, mm -hmm. And and I think Julio referenced this earlier and others. We're looking at a particular perspective that could, I mean, I hear a lot of like, oh, we have, we have to make sure we have the experts. Um, I think whether it's experts or lay people perspectives and what rules one or the other or both may have at any one of these committee levels of, of this, um, I think the point is, is that it be considered that that's a critical piece of how we get those checks in. Um, I'm just very weary, frankly, and I've shared it before that this organization and Karen, I understand that's critically important. I'm I'm weary because of its heavy, heavy lean and partiality towards building database sh data sharing, promoting law enforcement interests and public safety interests, right? And not with an interest in addressing and um, dealing with the biases in data systems, you know, and racial biases specifically. So that's that's just where I'm coming from with this. Um, four years. How, how what have been the? <laughs> tell us what are the obstacles? Oh, what you don't you obstacles? don't want to. Well, you don't want to go into that. And this right. this this part of the project really hasn't been going on for four years. There were a lot of other things that that were happening. I wouldn't even. It wasn't related to this particular piece of the project. One more thing I just want to point out with this subcommittee is just the membership of, of who's been involved. I know people have been saying uh, repeatedly that a lot of the a lot of the panel members on RDAP have been a part of this, but I can say that um, it has not been a feeling by the Office of the Defender General that it's been an impartial um, uh, or it's it's been a reflection. It's been it's been slanted and partial towards law enforcement, um, and so I just share that. Um, and so I'll take a closer look and see, but I can't promise that I'll have a full, a, you know, ability to say yay or nay by tomorrow night um, on this from the defense. You don't need to. Yeah, you don't need to. By so what are you asking tomorrow night from for this part in terms of what we want the panel to? consider and give us input on what part of this yeah what part of the nuts and bolts piece of it are we bringing forward to the panel tomorrow night 
I'm not sure that it's just a part. I thought we would bring this forward to them. I mean, I'm going to send out an email in the morning, which is a little late, but, you know, everybody's... <laughs> They did get an email about reading stuff as it was going along, so I'm just going to remind folks of that. I wasn't thinking of splitting us down in any particular way beyond this. I mean, just honestly, that really wasn't what I was thinking. I mean, I mean, I'm not close to it i I'm, I'm you know i don't want to give you that impression but it wasn't what i had in mind okay so just to clarify my question again with another question are we are we being asked you know with this this um this language that we're reviewing tonight and I understand it's rough. Are we being asked, are, are you proposing that this language will be sub inserted in the report? Or is it still too rough draft of a form to even say that, that we're getting there, that it's a, it's, we're, we're or is it that the I rough? Would we're get, I would say we're getting there. I, I don't think, you know, I don't think things are, I mean, we were just talking before about other parts of the report that are very rough, that need uh, ironing out. I don't think this is any different. Well, and I guess I, I feel the need to address the comment you just made, Rebecca. Um, I actually don't know where um, your office would get the idea that NCJRP was law enforcement focused or biased because it's had nothing to do with law enforcement. It really started out as an idea around pretrial services and expanding pretrial services. So if, if you see that as tainted towards law enforcement, sure. Um, but it was really about pretrial services and um, making sure people got their needs met when they had mental health and substance abuse issues. That's where the whole thing started. And the first study that happened was Robin did a retrospective study on the Ohio risk and needs assessment and found that it didn't work in Vermont. So that project got dropped. It was originally going to be um, piloted in two areas in the state the, to see the PSA. I just want I just need to it, was, it wasn't the ORAS. It was the. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm just right. I just wanted to say that because that's the risk tool that the department uses. Thank you. Uh, every day. Yes, yeah. thank you. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, so the the Arnold tool, which is the um, public safety assessment, to see if it made any difference in Vermont. So we're going to pilot it in two sites, two court sites, with the with the um, approval and um, contributions from the public defenders, the state's attorneys, and the courts, um, and then hire someone to actually do those risk assessments. And if it worked, see if it was something that could be. Um, done across the state. It didn't work. COVID hit. And then um, and then the project shifted because the retrospective study didn't work. And it was shown that failures to appear, something that we've talked about in the um, violations of conditions of release um, subcommittee of the Sentencing Commission, you know, we found that um, not violation, the failures to appear were about 6%. Um, so what were we trying to fix here? So then we switched to, let's just focus on data integration then. And so we came up with this whole plan for data integration because that's what people really wanted. And a Arnold Venture said, no, we don't want you just focusing on that. We want you to do a study. So the study turned into um, writing a research design for looking at what happened during COVID, which is a kind of a natural experiment time between citations and custodial arrests. Who got arrested? When did they get arrested? Who who was um, who was released? Um, and it did have um, a racial lens on it to see if there was a a difference in who got custodial arrested and and who was released on a citation. So that did have a, a racial lens on it. 
And so we wrote the design um, and, and Marshall's been invited to all these meetings. And I think Matt has, I think Matt has been on the list as well. And, and they've attended some. And so. But not on the data integration piece, for sure. They haven't been a part of that. And, and I, and, and I should adjust my comments to be specifically on the, on what's relevant here for the RDAP panel is the data integration piece. And maybe it's helpful to hear, to say who is on, who's been a part of that project, like who has been going to the meetings and who's, whose voices have been part of this plan, I think should be shared. Um, I have no, we have no problem sharing it. I'm not the head of it. I'm just one of the worker bees on it. Um, Judge Grierson, Monica, me, um, Pepper, uh, Willa Farrell has been on it um, and was very integral to the whole initial focus that we had on pretrial services. Um, and David Shear was there too for a lot of it. David Shear, yeah. yeah, was there for a lot of it. Um, Chris Herrick is the one that really called the meetings. And I got, I can't, I'm blanking on his last name, but there was a fellow that worked over at DPS. Dean was another person that um, was integral oh, to the. Yeah, he was right? their, I, their ADS data guy. Their ADS right? data guy um, that was, and now Darwin Thompson Darwin. is the ADS data yeah. guy. So he's been peripherally involved in this. Um, well, I think yeah, I would, I, I main would the say main that. Poor group. Right. And all those, it's not like we had a subcommittee like this group this, to come up with that data integration plan. The whole NCJRP group was, has always been invited to participate in putting all those materials together. So, um, yeah. I, um, I'm in a disadvantage because I'm not a member of that group, but I am happy to, um, get Marshall or Matt in on one of these, or at least their direct input to, to share. But in any event, I appreciate you sharing the details. I think it does highlight the fact that we haven't had any representatives from the juvenile justice side on it. Well, DCF, but others involved, and and, and certainly not an RDAP um, community member's voice in there. Uh, I'm not. I'm not dismissing the work, or that it, none of it's relevant. I appreciate, you know, and, and Julio clarifying the different ways and the structure of thinking about it. I do appreciate it. It's just that I really, what I want to understand, what we're going into tomorrow, um, because I, I'm just sharing from the defender general's perspective. If it's, if it's that we are going to integrate our nuts and bolts section as being in lockstep with NCRJP's project on data integration, then that is going to be a problem because I can't, I, I don't believe, certainly I'll, I'll I, my understanding um, from Madam Marshall's end, but certainly mine here, like I haven't, I haven't heard that, like, you know, and I'm hearing from you guys that there isn't really a, a complete presentation of what is different, what isn't. There is admissions that there are holes that are, there is, it isn't a perfect match of all fours of what our work has been done. And so I am, not prepared, certainly by tomorrow, probably not by our November deadline, to wholesale commit to integrating the NCOJRP's project in here. If that's what we're going to ask tomorrow's meeting on, because it's critical to the language you have here, that's what I'm getting at, Eitan. Or are we pulling out general principles, right? Sort of this, these structural ideas, committees, right? Um, what should be the deliverables within? Um, I would support that. Uh, I just want to make sure we're not committing to linking ourselves up to some other project's work when the panel hasn't been fully um, I don't know, included or presented with what are the similarities or differences. I mean, we're just, you know, I understand there's a lot of similarities. I just am not comfortable with wholesale adoption of it in our, pan in our report. And I'll certainly share the same tomorrow with the panel if asked. Okay. I think that's all we can do at this point. Evan? Yeah, I just wanted to I just wanted to say that I would I, I did not interpret I mean, I didn't interpret this this number one here in the data data integration document as as obligating 
the office to follow the NCRG plan in lockstep. I mean, it, it says it should work with the ADS Digital Service Enterprise Unit Liaison to that project. It should engage in the same type of exercise that that project is engaged in, in which Julio has explained seems to be pretty plain vanilla in terms of a data integration project. But I would think that the office, if it determines that, hey, actually we're doing something a little bit different or we need to customize it in a certain way, I think it it would and should have the ability to do that. I, I interpret this document as saying, hey, there's another entity out there that's doing a data integration plan. It seems like a pretty standard plan. The two entities should communicate with one another to make the exercise more efficient, especially since it took the NCJRP many years let this office borrow from that work and hopefully cut down on that time. I mean, that's how I that's how I interpret this. Maybe I'm interpreting it incorrectly, but that's I don't see it as any more binding than that. But I guess it could be incorrect. Make that clear then, or or, or somehow because I I don't I don't I mean I don't see how it just seems a little bit more of a of a default and overlapping, um, but. I would I would also make sure that there's sort of a separation, a distinct separation um, between that work and and so that there's no implicit suggestion that we are adopting it wholesale because I do think it's it's it's, it's work they it's been done it's alongside parallel but not complete substitute. Okay, this is not going to be resolved. I, I just oh, want to okay. be fine with that. I don't. Yeah, I think what Evan said is perfectly fine. It doesn't have to be lockstep. But we should learn from each other. Sure. Then we're focusing on some language that's missing. And some concept that's missing. I would really like that brought up tomorrow night. Um, if that's all right. Um, in terms of how much of this, I, I can't really answer that. I mean, how much of this is, you know, definitely making it into the report. I, I, we haven't talked to the other half of the panel yet, so I can't, it would be inappropriate for me to comment on that. Um, what I would do right now is say, I think we've gotten this again. I want to put forth, I'm really uncomfortable going too much further without the rest of the panel. Um, bringing this conversation to them is perfectly fine. I And I would hope it would go to them. But with just the working group, I think we're at a moment. That's what I'm saying. That's all. Mm -hmm. um, does any is there another issue here separate from this that people want to discuss tonight with the intent of um, huh, focusing on what needs to be said tomorrow? No. This, Go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say this is a little unrelated to what we've been talking about for the last half an hour, but I figured I'd bring it up regarding last month. Um, and I know Tyler was at the full RDAP meeting and I wasn't, um, but I know that there have been some feedback um, regarding our, the name of being social justice instead of racial justice. I'm wondering if we feel like they um, that issue was resolved. And I was looking through the meeting notes of last month's meeting. Um, Anyway, I just wanted to bring it up um, and see how we felt or, or if we thought that was going to raise um, some issues in moving forward. Um, because if so, I, you know, I, I'm wondering if we just have a compromise, if it's brought up again, where we just say racial and social justice, just to be, um, mm. just, to, just to amend it if, if we think it's going to come up again. But... Uh... 
you want to do that before tomorrow? No, I was just bringing it up as a as a suggestion. If we hear that feedback okay. again, uh, that I would be okay with that. I think Tyler would be okay with that, et cetera. And I just didn't know if it was uh, going to be brought up again by community members or if the issue had been resolved and if they had um, kind of a oh, completely it agreed with come up again. <laughs> okay. So that's just that's just a suggestion. Um, and if you if the, you know if we don't like it, no problem, not married to it. But it was just a suggestion if it comes up again. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? We've got a good list here. Should be an interesting meeting tomorrow night. Yeah, we're almost there. And I, I and you know, thanks everyone for for hearing my questions and answering and clarifying. I do think before we all leave, I just want to share. I think we really are will be able to get a consensus on on a lot of these points, you know? Oh, yeah. And a lot of this is just in the details. In fact, I think we are on, on, on what we just talked about for the last piece here, the nuts and bolts and, and the connection to NCJRP. Karen, I'm, I'm hearing... I mean, it, it, we, we, it, we're all, we're almost on the same page or that we don't, we're not going to be committing to where there's no need, but there's obvious usefulness to acknowledge some, some parallel efforts out there, right? And, and resources. So um, I think this is all good. It just helps me to understand too where this is coming from. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're welcome. And I'm, you know, as far as your office goes, I'm happy to meet with you, Matt and Marshall and, I'm sure Monica would be too, and just talk things through if there's some misunderstanding or some concerns. Sure, thanks. Yep. Great. I do not want to end the meeting before everybody has gotten in everything they want to get in, but I also want to move us along. I'm good. Okay. I'm good as well. You're good? Okay, everybody, Elizabeth? Okay, <laughs> Monica, we're all like, all right, <laughs> great. <laughs> all right, then I'm hoping you will all speak up as much tomorrow as you did tonight, because um, we're really going to, you know, put this all in front of the entire body um, and get I mean, my experience has been with the other two reports we've done, when we get to this moment, people always, somebody brings up something I had no thought of before. And I just sort of look at them initially with annoyance because it means more work. And then secondly, I'm like, oh, that was important. Uh, um, so I'm sort of feeling like that may happen again. And I just want to put that out there. And I will see you all tomorrow at six. Great. Have a great night, everyone. Great. Great night, Thanks, everybody. everybody. This was good. <laughs>